we're gonna see we're gonna see who's up early on a saturday morning it's 8 30 a.m and i'm heading into my office because i got a nine o'clock and i posted a piece of content last night that uh has quite a few oh i gotta take something for my neck y'all i woke up with a crick in my neck that has quite a few uh responses already and uh i'm certain <laughs> that it's going to get even more responses it is all about some statistical data with regards to interracial dating. Good morning. Melissa's up early. Good morning. Okay, so it is all about some statistical data regarding interracial relationships. And the gentleman, a white gentleman who uh, is talking, is saying that uh, he's giving the percentages of divorce for interracial couples based on the race of each person. So black man to white woman, I think it was like, I don't know, it was 200% something. Um, Asian man to white woman, like he just gave all these statistics, but look what he said about white men and black women. He said that they were like, there was a 40% chance, a 40% less chance of them getting divorced. Like their ability to stay together is actually high and so i asked the sisters would you date a man outside of your race would you date a man of another race and you know i got some mixed comments thank you garland for purchasing a badge i appreciate you this morning i got some mixed responses um one young lady actually responded no i will only accept a black man or stay single forever and something about that comment was very disheartening to me. And again, you know, that's her right and her privilege and her preference. But something about that made me a little sad that you would miss out on a possible amazing life and an amazing man and an amazing future because you insist upon having a particular race of person. So, I mean, that's her, that's her right. That she is entitled to, to make that decision. But there were women in the comments who were like, yeah, I would be open. I would be open to exploring that. I would be open to, you know, because I think at this point, oh, this is another thing I saw in the comments. And y'all let me know what you think about this. A lot of sisters were in the comments talking about our men don't want us. Black men don't want black women. And, you know, they said, yeah, I'd love to be with a black man. I just don't think they want us. I just don't think they're feeling us anymore. And that really stung. Like, dang. Whew. Is there any truth to that? To the men that's on this live right now, is there any truth to that? Do black men not want black women? And think about it. I didn't say strong, independent black women. I didn't say masculine black women. I just said black women. Okay. Um, think I really want you to think about that because in my mind, I mean, I happen to be one of them, but I also know plenty of them. I know plenty of beautiful women, plenty of beautiful black women who are feminine, who are kind and sweet and loving and great cooks and um, collaborative and cooperative, you know, so it's, it's kind of sad, you know, it's kind of sad that this is where we've landed, that, um, we can't seem to get along with each other. And it's, it's kind of like what I tell women who say they don't have other female friends. I say, you know what, something about that just doesn't sit quite right. If you can't get along with your, you know, race, if you can't get along with your gender, to me, it says more about you than it says about an entire gender. That's just me. That's just, those are just my thoughts. But it's really saying something about you. It's not saying something about a whole, you know, three billion people on the planet that happen to be, you know, black or have some sort of um, African or African-American heritage. To me, it says something about you. So something to think about, but yeah, I saw, I ran across that and I was like, oh my goodness. And here's the funny thing. So I have a girlfriend who is black and she's married to someone who's white. I actually know quite a few, but one of them that I'm actually close with. And 
she said she's been telling me this for a while she's like no this is the perfect combination girl <laughs> she's like, this is the perfect combination she was giving me all the reasons why and she said that a lot of white men actually appreciate black women's strength they appreciate their grit and their resilience they appreciate the fact that they will partner because a lot of white men white women will not partner like they want to be princesses they want to be taken care of they want to be you know pedestalized this is what she's saying now that a lot of white women you know throughout history think about it throughout history they expect to not do anything not contribute anything to just be pedestalized and be made a princess and all of that get all that treatment la di da right whereas a black woman will partner with a man and dare i say it some black women will go above and beyond partnering like they will do more than their share which i'm trying to work y'all out of <laughs> i really am i'm trying to work y'all out of the whole i'm doing more than my share you're doing more than he's doing absolutely not absolutely not but apparently white men really appreciate this they appreciate the fact that black women are willing to be partnered they they will contribute in in a myriad of ways in which white women will not and they appreciate their strength they appreciate their resiliency their grit um you have black men who very much appreciate a, a, a black woman's beauty you know because i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep it a buck can't nobody do it like us can't nobody do it like us you see this face you see this 55 year old face and and i wish i could show you this 55 year old body I wish I could show you, okay? Can't nobody do it like us. So, uh, <laughs> okay. And look, I had a friend of mine, oh, you ever post pictures of yourself in the gym or you ever post pictures of your workouts? Or, no, I don't. I mean, maybe I will at, at some point or one day, but I know it. <laughs> I know it. My man gonna know it. My man gonna know what's under here and I know it. And can I be honest? That's good enough for me. I don't need to post it online. I don't need, everybody don't need to see what my body looked like or what I got. I know what I got, okay? And the man who puts a ring on this finger, the man who becomes my husband on that wedding night, he gonna know what he got. <laughs> he gonna be like, oh damn, oh my, oh Lord. <laughs> he gonna know what he got, okay? So that's how, that's how this sister is doing it. You see this face? You see this body? Okay, you see the things that I'm doing in my life, in my world, like I make ish happen, okay? But I think that's what white men, they kind of respect that. I think they respect that in a black woman. We will make stuff happen. <laughs> we'll make stuff happen. And then for those of y'all, and I got to, and I got to say this, because there's somebody right now looking at this thinking, they just want to, it's a fetish. It's a fetish. They just want to know what being with a black woman is like, and it's the closest thing to being with an animal and all that foolishness. I'm not saying there's not a percentage of white men that that might be true for. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going to deny. I think it's a small percentage, though. Okay, I think it's a very small percentage of white men that fetishize black women. I think most white men that date black women, <laughs> like. They, they see what I see, okay? They see what I see in the mirror, okay? They see they see a whole lot, and they're like, oh, oh, okay, if I have, so look, they say behind every great man is an even greater woman. If I had this woman behind me, uh-oh, I'm about to make some stuff happen. And y'all know, see, that's the difference sometimes between our men, and I'm not saying all our men, but a lot of our men, and, and, and white men. White men, are going to try to make something out of something. They're going to try to build something, make something, be about something. And, and they choose a woman. They choose a woman on purpose that's going to help make that happen. Right? They're like, yeah, let me partner. Let me get married. Let me, because how about this? Let's go here. This is one of the reasons why I encourage men to get married. But white men know this. They know this. I don't know if their fathers or their grandfathers or their mothers tell them this from birth. They know that by 
taking a wife and a, and taking a family on, they know that that is the fuel. That's the fire that they need to make stuff happen. They welcome responsibility. They welcome the challenge of, okay, I got a wife to take care of. I've got children to take care of. I can't be out here messing around, playing around, doing whatever. Like they welcome that added responsibility because it, it puts that fire in them. It adds that fuel to them to want to have something. Whereas black men, not all of them, okay? Not all of them, because I, like I said, and, and really not the ones I know. But some black men, y'all run from responsibility. You run from responsibility. That's the last thing you want. The last thing you want is to have a woman at your house holding you accountable or responsible for something. Like that's the last thing you want to see happen. You run from responsibility. You run from your children. You run from having a wife. Okay? I'm going to do a live later today talking about how most men can't afford a wife. And I don't mean money. Most of y'all cannot afford to have a wife. That's why you're really not getting married. Can we be honest? Y'all keep saying, oh, it's these modern day women and don't nobody want them. And this, the, the truth is you can't afford a good wife. You can't afford a good, healthy, feminine woman. You can't, you can't afford to be married to a good woman. That's the truth. That's what y'all really don't want to hear. But I digress. <laughs> That's not what this love is about. But okay, I'm going I'm to talk about that later. But they do understand these men marry and they marry young and they understand that that's part of the blueprint of their success. I wish black men did that. I wish black men understood that that is a part of the blueprint for success. That that thing on your back, that's what's going to push you to greatness. I have something to be responsible for. I need to make something happen. I can't. It, it isn't just me. It isn't just me sleeping in my mother's basement, you know, um, yeah, I'm it's still at home playing video games, working part time at, at Blockbuster, well, Blockbuster don't exist, GameStop, sorry, I'm dating myself, <laughs> at GameStop part time. No, they understand that. And they try to find a wife in college. They try to find a wife in grad school. Y'all, I can't tell you how many young white couples that I have in my practice. And some of them, it's not even like they have a lot of problems. They just want to prevent problems. But, I mean, I just think to myself, what is wrong with us? Every time they walk out, I'd be like, wow, why can't we do that? 26, 27, 28, 29. They be in programs, married. They be in medical school, married. They be in law school, married. They be in grad school, married. Why can't we do that? Now, y'all already know that's how I do it. <laughs> I met my I met my ex-husband when he was in medical school. That's how that's how I do it. That's how he do it and I do it because we knew we need to partner with someone. Like we understood that, but our breed of black person is rare. We are rare. People say, "Anita, you're a unicorn." I know. I know this. Okay? I I'm different. I'm different. All right. But dang, if I wish I couldn't spread this around, you need to be looking in undergraduate or graduate school, medical school. Law. Ladies, y'all not going to like this. That needs to be your priority is let me let me secure my family unit. OK, you can get that education. But remember what I said, 25. 25, all games need to stop. You need to stop being in these crazy situations. You need to stop this friends with benefits. Stop letting your ex come over and hit it. Stop all that. You need to secure a husband, okay, and a family. Because, see, this is what nobody is telling women in their 20s. Nobody's telling women in their 20s and their early 30s. They're not telling you that a shift is going to happen within your body. A shift is going to happen within your mind. What you want now, what you think is fun now, ain't going to be fun at 35. Ain't going to be fun at 40. Ain't going to be fun at 45. Nobody is talking about that. But, oh, we got to do hot girl summer, and we got to do this, and we got to date multiple, all these men, and figure out what we like, and this and that and the third. Instead of listening to wise counsel, instead of cutting that mess off at 25, and, and look, and when I say cutting it off at 25, that don't mean be a hoe until you're 25. 
that just means if you dating someone in high school, maybe you dating someone in undergraduate, like that means you are in a relationship, okay? And at 25, if that person's not ready to make it official, you move on to, okay, now I need to meet my husband. That don't mean be a hoe, okay? Hear me well. I'm going to slut it up, and then at 25, I'm going to cut it off because Auntie Anita said, no, that's not what that means. Because by then, you can't pair bond. You can't pair bond with nobody. And can I keep it really real? I think that is exactly why women are in the state that they're in. That's why y'all don't want no husband. That's why you don't want no kids. You've given your body away to all these different men. You can't bond. You can't bond with anybody. You can't bond with your children. You can't bond with your husband. That's why. So between hormonal birth control, let me get on this soapbox real quick. Hormonal birth control that's got your mind and your hormones all messed up, got you choosing the wrong thing in a man, and, and, and you having multiple sex partners, between those two things, that's why you don't want to get married. That's why you don't want to have children. Because it done, it done screwed you up. It done screwed up the natural, normal progression of a feminine woman to want to nurture something, to want to love something, to want to take care of something, to want to bond to people. Okay, I didn't even plan to go here, but this is the spirit downloaded it downloaded in me. But I've been thinking this for a while. Women can't bond. You can't truly enjoy sex because you're having sex with men that don't love you, don't like you, ooh, ooh, don't like you, don't love you, you don't trust, they're not exclusive, they're not committed, they have not committed and chosen you, your body can't even fully open to them, but you know what you decided to do? I'll settle for some carnal pleasure. And like I said last night, most of y'all ain't even getting that. If we keep it in really real, 70 plus percent of women are not having an orgasm through intercourse. Sorry, and I'm not sorry. And if women were as bold as me, if they were as honest and as bold as me, they would admit that to you. Most of these women out here having this casual sex, it ain't even that good. <laughs> it ain't even that good. And you know why they think it's good? Because they're releasing oxytocin. They're bonding to the man by releasing oxytocin. They're getting attached. They're creating a soul tie. And then they're running around telling you, you know, oh, he's my man. I need him. I love him and this and that. But in reality, there really is no real bond. You know, it's a soul tie. So, but they can't even bond. They can't even want what healthy feminine women want. It's beyond sad. But I want you to keep this in mind. This is how the culture works, okay? So instead of following nature, instead of following our biology, instead of doing what is very natural for, for men and women to do, it's kind of like um, God, when he was in the, in the garden, you know, he told Adam and Eve, hey, you may eat of anything in this garden. You may have anything in this garden. All of this is good for you to eat. All of this is good for you, right? And yes, there are a lot of wonderful things, you know, that we can eat that grow out of the ground and, you know, animal, all of it. He gave all of it. But the culture, this is how the culture works. It says, you know what? We want you to start, we want you to start eating this, right? This is what's good for you. Lotion. Lotion is what's good for you. And you need to start eating lotion because this, this is what everybody's doing. And I can assure you, if you start eating this every day, all day, it is going to make you sick. It is going to not give you the nutrients that you need. It is going to have a very detrimental effect on your body. Because just because someone says this is now food, this is what we should be doing, this is what we should be eating, that don't make it so. You're not going to change your nature. You're not going to change God's design for a man and a woman. You're not going to change the way things were meant to be by God's design, Mother Nature. So you consuming this because someone in the culture told you, yeah, this is what we're eating now. You're going to eat this, and this is what we're eating. You know? You're going to be sick as a dog. You're going to die because you're not going to get any nutrients. You're not going to get any of the things that you need to stay healthy. Think about that. But that's what we're doing. 
We are taking something completely unnatural, completely not normal, and we're trying to push it. That's the agenda. Let's make this food. It's not. It's not. Okay, that's the message for today. I'm going to put a post up. I need every woman who follows my page. (laughs) I need you to repost or share this post. We have got to stand together. It's us. It's us. And you know what? If the men think it's them, great. I think it's them, but I'm going to stand on as us. We have got to get this movement going. There will be no more free sex. There will be no more free wife. That ends. That has to end. It has to end. And when I say free sex, I mean the way you dress. I mean what you do. I mean where you go. I mean all of that. Stop giving your feminine essence away. It is weakening us. It is weakening us. Every time you do that, it's making men stronger and it's making us weaker. Garland says courtship. I'm going to look at your comments real quick because I've been talking and I've been seeing comments scroll by. But we are getting weaker and weaker. And here's the thing. Even if men, you know, it seems like men are getting stronger, they're really not. In, In my mind, they're still getting weaker. They're getting weaker and weaker. White women tend to embrace their identities through their white husbands. White women, in my observations, are extremely jealous of black women. Amen, Garland Stillwell. I, amen. I've been thinking that. <laughs> I've been thinking that. I don't be saying it because I got some white friends. <laughs> I've been thinking that. Because look at us. Look at the glow. Look at the glow, honey. And look, my white girlfriends, I got white girlfriends, 45. And they like Anita. Anita, what's going on? What? No, there's no way you could be 55. I said, yes, I am. And look, y'all, I'm about to turn 56 on the 23rd. I'm about to turn. I've never been shamed of my age. I never had a problem with telling anybody my age. I'll be 56 on January 23rd. Boom. Okay? Because like I said, look at this face. Look at this body. As long as I have control over that, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm all the way good. Okay? Black men see a woman's attitude above a lot else. Agreed. Agreed. White men are prone to be more affectionate. They aren't intimidated. What their spouse does. Yeah, that's true. Because they build in their own life. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah, they welcome it. They welcome you doing your thing. They welcome you building an empire right beside them. Oh, you a hundred percent. That's definitely the white guys I know. They like Anita. You got two business. That's great. You know, like that. Well, how can I help? What can I do? They they love it, a hundred percent. Oh, he said facts. It's their mouth. First of all, I agree. I agree, and we definitely need to work on that. And I've been telling women, if you could just be quiet, right? If you could just be quiet, like just be quiet. Don't say nothing. Like <laughs> that's a start, right? And then I can teach you what to say. But really, it all start with just you being quiet. <laughs> it really do. Family values is top notch. Thank you, Terry Rux. Um, thank you. Slave era jealousy between the white slave owner's wife and the female slave that the slave owner takes as a concubine still exists. I'll find that psychology paper for you. Thank you. Yeah. I say the same things to my sons. Y'all need to be married. Yes. What is wrong with us? And look, back in, I think it was 1968 or 72, 76% of black people were married. What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? What has happened? Man, it's sad. It was the way he said sister at the end of that video that didn't sit right with me. <laughs> I mean, he's white. How, how are he supposed to say it? Okay, he white. All right. I've yet to run into a 20-something black woman who would listen to the advice you and other women of your experience provide, let alone apply it in real life, I know. And look, I I, I was recently on a podcast called Edified Minds that's going to be coming out on my birthday, and she speaks to women in their 20s. So I just pray, y'all, I pray every day that that hits somebody's spirit in their 20s. I do, and I'm looking to partner with more younger content creators. I really am, because I'm like, seriously. I, I really am. 
I think young and millennial women today are more afraid of marrying the wrong person than marrying young. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. Courtship. We need to bring back courtship. Need to bring back courtship. All right. I got to run in here, y'all. My appointment started at nine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of the movement. Thank you so much for, you know, just being here, showing up, giving your thoughts and your opinions. Thank you, Garland Stillwear, for the purchase of a badge. I appreciate you supporting the platform. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel because it helps so much. And guess what, y'all? Doing that is totally free. Supporting the platform, being here, commenting, liking, it doesn't cost you a dime. It doesn't cost you a dime. Please, please, please. That's all I ask of you. It's not going to cost you a penny. It's not even going to cost you but a second of your time. Like, subscribe to my channel. That's it. Share it. That's it. But watch out for that post today. I'm actually going to put in uh, some hashtags into the hashtag generator to see what hashtags to put in to reach more people. Ladies, share that post. Repost it to your feed. But we have to get this message out. This has to stop. Have a great day. Have a beautiful, this is a beautiful Saturday morning here, and I think it's going to be a warm one. But have a great day, and as always, stay open to love.